The Kano Giants, extensive burying ground of giant race discovered in the early 1800s. Among these bones uncovered from an extensive ancient burying ground were some belonging to men of gigantic stu structure. In 1798, the first permanent American settlers from the East arrived in the Western Reser Reserve of Ohio. They began to clear the forest along the southern shore of Lake Erie, and in the process they found numerous ancient earthen structures, and almost everywhere they, find, they finally made spear points and other artifacts of long forgotten and once populous native society. The people obviously quite different from the Massasauga Indians then living in that country. Now let's remember around the Great Lakes area, the Native Americans have been found to have ancient Minoan uh, Crete of uh, ancient Greece DNA. And we know that the ancient Minoans, the people of Crete, even written, it's even written in the Old Testament, the Philistines came from there, the Philistine giants, Aka Goliath and that gang. Now, a generation before the first immigrant explorers of western Pennsylvania and southern Ohio had made similar discoveries. The extensive earthworks of Circleville and Marietta, Ohio, were already well publicized in the time that settler Aaron Wright and his companions made a stake out uh, to stake out their new homes along Canoe Creek in what would later become Ashtabula County, Ohio. The strange discoveries of Aaron Wright in 1800? Perhaps it was because he was a single young man with plenty of energy, or perhaps it was because his choice for a homestead included a large mound builder, quote unquote, burial ground. Whatever the reason may have been, Aaron Wright has gone down in the history books as a director of the Canote Giants, the unusually large-boned ancient inhabitants of Ashtabula County, Ohio. In an 1844 account, Harvey Nettleton reported that this, quote, ancient burying grounds of about four acres, end quote, was situated in what soon became the village of New Salem, later renamed Cano, extending northward from the bank of the creek to Main Street in an oblong square. Harvey Nettleton noted in his account, quote, the ancient graves were distinguished by slight depressions in the surface of the earth, deposed, deposed in straight rows with the intervening spaces or alleys covering the whole area. It's estimated to contain from two to three thousand graves, two to three thousand graves. These depressions on a thorough examination made by Esquire Aaron Wright as early as 1800 were found invariably to contain human bones blackened with time which on exposure to the air soon crumbled to dust. The prehistoric cemetery on Aaron Wright's land was remarkable enough just in its size and the configuration of the graves but it was what was in those graves and in the adjacent burial mounds that captured Nettleton's attention. The mounds that were situated in the eastern part of what is now the village of Cano and the extensive burying ground near the Presbyterian Church appear to have had no connection with the burying places of the, uh, the Native American Indians. They doubtlessly refer to a more remote period, an even more ancient period, and are the relics of an extinct race of whom the Indians had no knowledge. These mounds were of comparatively small size and of the same general character of those that are widely scattered over the country. What is most remarkable concerning them is that among the quantity of human bones they contain, there are found specimens belonging to men of large stature and who must have been nearly allied to a race of giants. Skulls were taken from these mounds, the cavities of which were sufficient capacity to admit the head of an ordinary man, and jaw bones that might be fitted on over the face with equal facility. The bones of the, and of the arms and lower limbs were of the same proportion, exhibiting ocular proof of the degeneracy of the human race since the period in which these men occupied the soil which we now inhabit. In other words, these were humans, but a lot taller than we are today. Gigantic. So, uh, now, what Nehemiah King found in... Uh, 1829. 
Nettleton's account was widely circulated when it was summarized in Henry Howe's Historical Collections of Ohio in 1847. Howe writes that Thomas Montgomery and Aaron Wright, coming to Ohio in the spring of 1798, and of the subsequent discovery of the extensive burying ground and of the human bones found in the mounds nearby. Howe repeats the report that among these uncovered bones, quote, were some belonging to men of gigantic structure, end quote. He also tells how in 1829, a tree was cut down next to the ancient, quote, Fort Hill in Cano, end quote, and that the local owner, landowner, quote, the Honorable Nehemiah King, with a magnifying glass counted 350 annular rings, end quote, beyond some cut marks near the tree center. He concludes, deducing 350 from 1829 leaves 1479, which must have been the year when these cuts were made. This was 13 years before the discovery of America by Columbus. It perhaps was done by the race of the mounds with an axe of copper, as that people had the art of hardening that metal so as to cut like steel. The same year that Henry Howe's History of Ohio appeared, another interesting book was published by the Smithsonian Institute entitled Ancient Monuments of the Mississippi Valley. On that seminal report by E.G. Squire and E.H. Davis appears the first known published description of Fort Hill, that strange pre-Columbian landmarks, meaning before Columbus, Strange pre-Columbian landmarks situated on the property of Aaron Wright's neighbor, Nehemiah King. And this is on uh, Collective Spark by N. Hale from Ancient Mysteries. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.